Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Davenport. Today we're going to be reading a book called Snowflake Bentley by Jacqueline Briggs Martin. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything in the world. William Bentley was born February 9, 1865, on a farm in Jericho, Vermont, between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield, in the heart of the snow belt, where the annual snowfall was about 120 inches. Guys, that's 10 feet. That's taller than your front door. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies to show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. He attended school for only a few years. She had a set of encyclopedias, Willie said. I read them all. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the ice crystals. From his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and did many experiments with raindrops. He learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated. When a snowflake melted, just that much beauty was gone, without leaving any record behind. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had ever imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided that he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three winters. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could mag magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening, which only let a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. He learned, too, that he could make the snow crystals show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. Even so, his first pictures were failures, 
They were no better than shadows, yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked! Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. He learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits of molecules of water attached to the speck to form its branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystals' branches grow. A little more cold, or a little less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why, in all his pictures, he never found two snowflakes alike. When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal, and it didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was only able to make a few dozen good pictures. Some winters he made hundreds. The best snowstorm of his life occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over a hundred photographs during a two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. Willie's nieces and nep nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with them. Willie so loved the beauty of nature, he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs, jeweled with water drops, and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. But now, his snow crystal pictures were always favorite. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat in the grass and watched Willie project his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs and added to their collections every year. Artists and designers used the photographs to inspire their own paintings and work. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on, expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. 
he spent every picture, every penny from his pictures on his pictures. Willie said they were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. By 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and received 40000 from the sale of photographs and slides. Less than a month after turning the first page of his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to make more pictures. He became very ill with pneumonia after that walk, and he died two weeks later. The, play, the plaque on the monument says, Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world-famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, William A. Bentley a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mystery of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs. This monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters of the story of the man who loves snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farm scientist. And in his book, and his book was taken, his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know the icy wonders that land on their own mittens. Thanks. To Snowflake Bentley. So there's a picture. I'm going to try to make it bigger. I don't know if it will let me. It won't. But there's a picture of him. You can see there's a picture of his camera that he used. And oh, I don't know how to turn those off. <laughs> anyway, we are going to be learning about snowflakes and all the different types of hexagonal shapes that um, you may find. So hopefully when we get our next snowstorm soon, because you know that Ms. Davenport loves snow. So hopefully when we get our next snow, maybe you can try to go out and catch them and maybe with your parents' phone or camera or something, you can catch a picture of a snowflake. So I will see you soon on the lessons and I'm so glad that I got to read this to you today. I love this book. See you soon.